Welcome back everyone. I'm Gareth from Creative Connors coming at you from the world headquarters in sunny Rhode Island, the biggest little state in the union. Today, I can't contain my excitement that we are finally gonna talk about relay switches. This is the last major component used in the trainee control circuit. We've been building up to this moment over the past several weeks. If you missed the earlier videos, I've talked about how we designed the relay logic for the trainee control, simple switch terms and construction, and how to use limit switches as basic position sensors. I'll go ahead and leave some links below if you want to catch up. These prior discussions really laid the groundwork to talk about relay switches. And I'm jazzed to talk about it because this is a big step into more sophisticated automation. Relays are basic enough to easily grasp, but they're also sophisticated enough to be used as building blocks in just about every control panel you design, no matter how basic or complex. They're kind of like the amino acids of automation, and they're definitely like the gateway into PLCs and programmable control, which is all really, really exciting stuff. But let me not get too far ahead of myself. Okay, relay switches. What are they and why do we care? Now, we know that manual switches are made to be actuated by people pushing or twisting or flicking them. And then limit switches are made to be actuated either by the scenery hitting them directly or by some moving part in the machine that glides by and actuates the switch. But relay switches are actuated by an electrical signal. It's a switch that you can control remotely. You can use a low voltage, low current control signal to flip the switch on a high power circuit without the switch contacts and the actuator even needing to be near each other. Here, I'm using a 24 volt relay to switch on and off a 180 volt DC motor. When I press this button, I send a few milliamps of 24 volt control signal to the relay, which closes the switch and powers the motor. Now, you might be thinking, big deal. I can turn the motor on and off with a manual switch too, and that seems even simpler. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. But if you wanted to have the switch on the other side of the room, say, from the motor, then you'd need to run all of those big power wires across the building. And you'd need to have a manual switch that has enough current capacity to switch that motor power circuit directly. That starts to get unwieldy with anything beyond just the smallest power circuits. Instead, just run a small pair of control wires to wherever you need it. Leave the power and the relay switch over by the motor. This becomes even more advantageous when you have several power circuits that you want to switch simultaneously. I'm going to go ahead and add this 24 volt DC, oh, I'm sorry, 12 volt DC car antenna running off of this DeWalt battery pack. Now when I press the button, the big motor spins and the antenna extends. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, let's go ahead and also add a 120 volt AC light bulb using another pole on this relay switch. Now when I press the button, both of these motors are going to run and the light turns on. Pretty cool, right? Each pole is isolated from the others. So these circuits don't need to be the same voltage. And we've got a 180 volt DC motor, a 12 volt DC motor, and the 120 volt AC light all operating from the same little 24 volt DC signal line running over a single pair of wires. So now you can kind of get a sense, right, of how useful these relay switches are. They let us isolate the control signal from the power circuits, letting us use just about any switch or sensor to control the power circuit, even if they are wildly dissimilar voltages and currents. Okay, let's go ahead and dissect the characteristics of a relay switch so you can learn how to specify the right one for your application. A relay switch, I got one taken apart here. It consists of two parts. 
a coil that actuates one or more set of contacts. Let's look at those contacts first. The contacts of a relay switch mimic the same specs that we discussed for manual switches. The contacts can be single throw, normally open, are also called form A contacts, or single throw, normally closed, also called form B, or double throw contacts, and that's actually what this is here, or transfer contacts, also known as form C contacts. Transfer contacts have a normally closed path and a normally open path. I've got a single pole double throw relay right here. Let's wire it up and take a look at how it operates. Turn on the power supply and let's juice this up. When the relay is deactivated, the red and amber lights are on. But if I activate the relay, the green lights turn on. Again, this all sounds suspiciously familiar, right? It's exactly the same nomenclature as manual switch contacts. Now, relay contacts, just like manual switches, are rated for the maximum switching voltage and current capacity of the power circuit. The current rating is often specified with the utilization category. The utilization category just defines the type of device that you are switching with the contact. You can switch a higher resistive load than inductive load. So maybe the contact can switch like a 10 amp light, but only a six amp motor. Now we don't need to dig too deep on utilization categories right now, but you should know that they are a thing and you need to size the contact appropriately for the type of circuit that you are switching. Okay, now let's talk about that relay coil. I'll bring back my disassembled one here. In the relaxed or non-actuated state, the contacts of the relay are pulled into a position by a spring, and you can see that little spring on top right here. To actuate the relay, the control signal energizes the coil of an electromagnet, and that electromagnet pulls the switch contacts into their activated position. Turn the control signal off, the electromagnet loses its magnetic force, and the spring takes back over and pops the contacts back to their original position. So the control signal has to provide the right voltage to energize the coil of the electromagnet. When we say a 12 volt relay, we're referring to that voltage of the coil that operates the relay. This has nothing to do with the rating of the contacts, it's just the voltage required to flip the switch. When you choose a relay, you wanna make sure that you select a coil voltage that matches the voltage in your control portion of the circuit. In the trainee, we use 12 volt DC coils but you're gonna find five volt DC coils and 24 volt DC coils and 24 volt AC coils, 120 volt AC coils, nine volt DC coils and other ones. This could be the same voltage as your power circuit, but if I'm honest, it's more common that the control voltage is lower than the power circuit that's being switched by the relay contacts. So when you specify a relay, you gotta consider the operating voltage of the coil. Now this is the control voltage that you're gonna to supply to flip the switch. You also wanna think about the maximum voltage and current ratings that the contacts will need when they switch your power circuit. You gotta think about how many poles you need in the switch. And then those poles, what contact type do you need? Are they gonna be form A, form B, form C? If we look at the relay that we use specifically on the trainee, we can see that the coil is rated for 12 volt DC operation. There are three poles on the switch, and each pole has double throw or form C contacts. And these contacts, oh, let me spin that around. These contacts are rated for five amps at 250 volts AC. Now we're only using them to switch about 200 milliamps at 12 volt DC in the trainee, but you can see that the switch is capable of a lot more current. Relays come in a bunch of different configurations with different numbers of poles, different contact types, various mounting uh, types and positions like DIN rail mount or direct mount, like panel mount, um, and all sorts of coil voltages. You're sure to find the right one for your needs now that you know what kind of specs you're gonna look for. I hope this helped explain the basics of relay switches. Relays are super handy devices that once you understand how to use them, you're gonna find that they solve a problem in just about every automation design. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out the Scenic Automation Handbook. I'll leave a link below. 
Oh, and it, if you want to see more videos, uh, like how to utilize relays, leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.